Hello everybody, here, uh, this is Tim again with another review, this time for the movie Cobweb. I got a little tongue tied there at the beginning. But yeah, this is for the new horror film Cobweb, which I recently got to see. This film pretty much came and went in theaters. It was made on pretty low budget, which it didn't, if you watch the film, it doesn't really need a high budget. I'll just go ahead and say, I'd give this a three and a half out of four. I thought it was pretty good. It's not a great movie, but it was a pretty good movie. It's short, it's only like 88 minutes. It does kind of fly by pretty fast. There are some flaws in the movie overall. The good in the movie, I like the creepy setup. This boy who has like these overbearing parents who are kind of, you know, a little asshole, asshole ish, like when he stands up to a bully at school, even though he kind of overdoes it because he pushes the bully down the stairs or whatever after the voice in his house tells him to, like in his walls or whatever, he tells him he needs to stand up for himself. He does overkill that because he like breaks the kid's legs. It is a little much, but of course the kid was abusing him like nonstop. But it still is a little much, of course, to do that by pushing him down the stairs. And, but his parents like lock him in the basement and everything, you know, like basically just leave him down there and like close the walls up on him. It's, you know, obviously abusive parenting, but yeah, you got that going on. So, um, so it's like a creepy atmosphere you got in the movie. And I like the subtlety of like, you know, are the parents evil? Aren't they? And the kid like finds a skull out in the pumpkin patch. Of, it's supposed to be like the skull of the missing trigger treater who the voice in the walls tells him like, uh, the trigger treater like saw her one day when she was trying to get help or whatever from inside the walls and then the parents had to kill her. And she tells him that she's his long lost sister or whatever. And uh, you find out through the movie by the time you get to the end that yes, the twist, the parents are actually, you know, they did actually lock the sister in there. And they did, they did kill the little kid and buried her skull in the pumpkin patch, the missing trick-or-treater. They are the ones that killed her. They even tell the kid the story about the missing trick-or-treater and just to tell him that's why he doesn't get to go trick-or-treating. Even though they're the, they're, the, they're the ones that killed the trick-or-treater. <laughs> the acting in the movie is good. You got like the only positive force in the boy's life, which is this teacher at school. Um, the actress does a good job. All the acting in here is good. The, the chick who played the mom in this, they played the mom of the child. She's a good looking woman, uh, but she does a good job playing like the crazy weird mom who like, you know, knows more than what she's saying or whatever is up to no good. <laughs> but yeah, the parents are just weird. There's a scene where like the teacher comes to the house or whatever is like trying to talk to him wants to check on the kid and everything the dad's like walking around with a hammer and a cut on his arm he's like acting real weird it's like yeah you know he's up to some crazy shit <laughs> but yeah and the teacher like leaves you get the idea of like will he kill the teacher or won't he and they play the suspense pretty well by the time you get to the end the, the voice in the walls tells him that the parents are going to kill him the kid's name is peter the child actor in this does a good job um tells him that the parents are pretty much going to kill him and he gives into it because he's scared of the parents now after up to this point because they're acting so weird. And so he pulls them with rat poles. In which his dad actually showed him earlier in the film. We don't really know if the parents actually would have killed him or not. But they did actually give off the vibe that they might have. Because they were being real suspicious. Like talking to each other about things and stuff like that. So they did give off like a weird vibe that they may actually kill him. And come to find out the creature that's in the walls is actually his sister. It was telling the truth. And I've seen some people online like talking about. Well is, you know, is it a ghost or whatever. And when you see the creature at the end. Or you actually see it at the end. It's like well you know it's not very good. Some, a lot of people complain they didn't like the ending mostly fine with the ending it does get a little over the top and the creatures like crawling across the walls and everything basically you find out that the thing inside the walls is his sister his older sister or would be his older sister or whatever and she was like put inside the walls because she was born deformed and everything and they didn't want her anymore and they pretty much just put her inside the walls kind of reminds me of the movie barbarian recently and a little bit of like malignant the way the creature moves it moves like a spider and i heard some people were disappointed by the look of the thing because you get like one or two shots of its face towards the end because she's got long hair hanging out in her face so you can't see it very good she's got spiders in her hair you get a little bit of a close-up with it and it's kind of like one of those extended mouths like that with you know teeth all the way through it and you get you know she's obviously deformed um so you get, and I heard some, and it is a little much that she has like super strength at the end, obviously. That is a little much, but that's the standard monster movie, horror movie thing. It becomes a monster movie at the end after the parents are killed and he lets his sister out. And you find out the sister wants to punish the brother as well because she envied the fact that he got to live a normal life out in the open and everything. And she had to be locked up like a freak and basically tortured and abused by the parents. So she wants revenge on him as well and wants to lock him up basically and just leave him in there like treat him like she was treated so you get it it's obviously this person has been like mentally abused but she has like super strength of course and everything she moves like a spider and i i heard some people disappointed that she you know looks like supernatural and all that but that didn't bother me because the, the movie kind of hints at it because you see spiders throughout the film and so to me that was obviously hints of what the creature in the walls is probably going to look like so that didn't really bother me and as for the creature being supernatural or supernatural, semi-supernatural at the end, like moving around walls and everything and climbing, she even states that she learned how to climb and stuff while she was like trapped inside the walls and everything. And I'm like, that doesn't really bother me. It's a horror movie. There's so many horror movies where creature people are like born deformed and they get like, 
you know, enhanced strength and everything and agility is just a side effect of the deformity. It's a horror movie cliche. If you've seen enough horror movies, you know this. So I wasn't really that bothered by it. Super strength's a little much, but it's not really that big a deal to me. I like the movements of the creature and I like the way the actress who was playing the creature, um, which it has like a regular human body, but it has long hair. And it has uh, in its face, in its face, like Oliver's body, it like real, has real long hair, but it has like a human female body, and it has the face like that, like the big smile or whatever, and moves around like a spider climbing the walls and stuff. But it still is like a humanoid creature. It still has a female body. Um, but uh, I like the way the actress played it. It was good. Um, the ending of the movie is a little weak. Like basically, the teacher comes to like rescue the kid. Like comes there because he called her for help and everything, and she shows up there, and she goes to help him. And you get to the end of the movie. And um, she's like rescuing Peter the boy and they manage to capture the sister and lock her inside this um, big pit with this cage thing over top of it. This great looking, you know, hold, holding thing. And the thing's like, before they get ready to leave, she's like, I'll always be with you, Peter, every time you're at night and alone or whatever and you hear something or you'll think you see, a, you know, a hair move, a long hair or whatever and you'll think you'll hear me and all that. And it's like showing flashes and it's like him like looking around his room and you get the idea that this is like inside of his mind. And then... Um, you see him like stand up and she's like standing behind him and you get the idea that's that's like in his imagination like in his mind of what he's thinking you know as she's saying that you know like she'll always be with him because he'll always be paranoid that she may be back you know it's almost like a creepy fairy tale really this movie feels like and on imdb or not imdb but on wikipedia it says like in the plot summary at the end that the teacher like adopted peter and that uh he sees Sarah like in his house at the end but that's not the way the movie plays it you don't get that sense at all you don't get the sense that the teacher adopted him or anything the bug but you get the sense that the teacher's obviously going to help him she's obviously going to take peter out of there but they never say that she adopted him or whatever that's like somebody on wikipedia like putting their forth their own like opinion of the ending or something but the way the ending plays in the actual movie is just like he's imagining in his head at the end as he's leaving with the teacher or whatever about him like seeing sarah the, which is his sister or whatever like still with him and all that and so basically he's going to be scarred and paranoid for the rest of his life regardless of getting out of the situation so yeah <laughs> it is a bit too abrupt because of that which caused me to knock it down to like a three and a half I think it would have been stronger as an ending if it would have just ended with like they get out of there and you skip to like a month later or something and um he's like living with the teacher or something and he you know he's like paranoid and he it's in the middle of the night and he thinks he sees like Sarah's long hair go by or something but he doesn't know if it's in his imagination or not and it just kind of ends on a cliffhanger the way it ends here it's almost like sequel bait in case this makes any good money uh <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, you know, is it in his imagination or no? It's like sequel bait in case this makes money. You know, one flash of the random flash of the creature at the end because it's in his imagination that he's thinking about at the end. So it's like, eh, you don't really need that. It would have been worked better with a more subtle type creepy ending, in my opinion. Like, like creepy, like, creepy final shot. I mean, this movie would work better as that. As it is, it's pretty much a, a, it's not even really a horror movie for the majority of it until the climax of the creature starts attacking the Sarah creature. Before that, it's just kind of a thriller. For the most part, it's almost like a, a dark Tim Burton movie with a bit more gore, really, by the uh, all together as a whole, until it uh, becomes like a creature feature towards. Well, for, for the most majority of the movie, first two acts, it's pretty much more like a Tim Burtonish like horror movie, really, thriller, until it gets to the main end. Then it becomes like a creature feature because the creature is like killing a bunch of people, and the people it kills, like these bullies or whatever, like the kid he pushed down the steps, like randomly shows up at the house at the end, his uh, the kid's house, Peter's house with his, I guess his brothers or whatever, or cousins, he shows up there to, like, beat the shit out of Peter and, like, destroy the house, which is really weird because, like, they show up in there and they just walk in and they don't know if Peter's parents are there or not. And, I mean, if his parents were there, his dad would have, like, beat the shit out of these kids and just called the police and they all would have been arrested. So I don't get what this kid's plan was. It's kind of stupid. It's almost like they're just threw in at the end for the body count for the purpose of being killed. And it is pretty much like that, but their deaths are cool. So, yeah, one of them gets their head ripped off. It's pretty, pretty fun. Yeah, altogether, I can give this a three and a half out of four. If the ending was stronger, I could give this a four out of four. If the, well, the ending is, the third act is good for me, even though it gets a little bit too over the top with the superhuman strand. It's the final shot, basically, is what I'm talking about, because it just ends on that, uh, I'll always be with you, Peter, and he's, like, imagining stuff in his mind of, like, her always being there and behind him or whatever, like, always with him, and it just goes off. It's just, like, it just feels rushed. Like, does it? that's all, folks. Bam, boom, done. It's just too quick. It would have worked better with like more of a subtle type creepy ending, like I said, like skipping months later and him with living with the, the teacher, him like a, thinking he sees Sarah, but you know he maybe he didn't. You know what I'm saying? That would have worked better as like a creepy chiller type ending for this type of story. But yeah, altogether three and a half out of four. Uh, pretty good movie. 
I liked it. I'll check it out on Blu-ray. Something tells me that the ending was probably something that they were kind of, the director, maybe the writer and stuff in the studio itself were probably like undecided about. Maybe went back and forth. Maybe when this hits Blu-ray or something, maybe there'll be like an alternate ending that probably does make more sense. Uh, but yeah, all together, three and a half out of four. Um, I would be open to maybe seeing what this director could do with a sequel to this, but at the same time, maybe it's better as a one-off. I guess if they made a sequel, it'd probably be about like the Sarah creature or something, maybe finding a mate or something. Maybe like she gets out of there and finds like a, a guy, you know, she wants to be with or something, you know, or tries to go after a guy she wants to be with or something. Maybe it wouldn't even involve Peter. Maybe it'd be like a new story with a new group of people living in the house or something, you know what I'm saying? could be something like that or maybe she actually finds a friend another and another like human or something who's an outsider or something like she is who gets um, abused as well maybe she becomes friends with him because of that you know what i'm saying like you could go different directions with this if you wanted to do a follow-up film but you wouldn't really have to this kind of says all it needs to say even with the the weak final shot but yeah all together pretty good i'd recommend it I'd, i'm gonna pick it up on blu-ray thank you for watching and i'll see you again